Yes, so let me ask you this, guys. If I knew, if I had like 80 people, right, and I knew the probability that uh, less than 70 of them uh, watch Fear the Walking Dead. You with me? I knew that, if I knew that uh, less than 70, the probability that less than 70 of them watch that show was uh, 40%. If I knew the probability that less than 70 is 40%, what's the probability of at least 70? So probably less than 70 is 40%. What's the probability of at least 70? 60%. 60%. Does that not make complete sense? Complete sense. Because that together, they're everything. So if one's 40, that has got to be 60. That's all this problem is. Probably less than 21 is 1 minus the probability of at least 21. Same thing we just did, because together they are everything. So why would I rather do this? Because there's only two calculations I need. Right? And if I do this way, there's 21 calculations, 0 through 20. Screw that. So what do you guys get for this one? It was, uh, I think it was 0.00026, something like that? Yeah. Times 10 to the negative 4. Don't put 2.66. That'll make me worried about you. Can't be greater than 1. And if you round it to 3, you're fine. It's 0.0003. And this one was like 0. 0. 0.0000 something. One. Who? 1.8. One 1.8? One eight. One eight. One yeah, whatever it was. So when you add those together, you get 0. 0. 0. 0. 2, 6, 7, 8, whatever. So if you, if you round it to the 0. 0. 0.0003, you're fine. So when I do 1 minus that, I get 0. 0.9997. Nine, 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 seven. All right, maybe, maybe. So if I have 80 people, I said, what's probably that less than 79 of them? Oh, my God. I'm going to do freaking 79 and 80. I'm not going to do 78, 77, all the way down. I got you, Jeff. I got you. It's done. What? Okay. So that's number one. So he's going to have to help me because I gave everybody away. Number two, what is the... Summary of what's going on, number two. We had 211 people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's N. N what was P? P is 0.12. So Q would have to be? 0.88. Beautiful. So for part A, I ask you for the probability what? 19. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 19. 19. Yeah. So then the formula would be? 211. 211. C. 19. 19. 19. So how many successes do I want? 0. 19. And how many failures do I want? 192. 192, because together these are supposed to make 211. Stop there for a second. So then the formula makes this look weird with the n minus x, because all it's saying is whatever you got here, you need the rest of them here. So these two always add up to be the total. Uh, when you plug that in, let's take a look at that. I'm not going to turn my camera every time. Um, 211. She is, where do you go, 19 times 0.12 to the 19 times 0.88 to the, what was it? 192. So you get that, 0.0362. Is that what you guys got? Yes. Yeah. You, can, you can do it, Jeff. There you go, buddy. Let me see if it'll do this for me again. So if, if I have the newer calculate, cal calculate, I like it. I have the newer calculator, what would that look like? It would look like this. All right. Maybe make
maybe. What's part B say? What's part B say? Mean and standard deviation. Oh, okay. So what's the formula for the mean? And times Kicks ass, NP, no tables to make. Yay. And this formula only makes sense. The standard deviation formula, uh, but this one is like 12% of everybody, so of course 12% of 211 is what I expect. And what do you get there, I'm sorry? 25, 32, 32. And then standard deviation, squared MP, yeah, 211.12.88. <laughs> Four point seven two zero seven two. Four point seven two zero three. Two zero three. Yeah. All right. How are we doing? It was everybody. Okay. And then I think part the next one says unusual. Uh, the max expected, min expected, right? Yeah. yeah. Up two steps, down two steps. So you go 25.32 minus 2 times this uh, should be like 15 point something, maybe 15.8. What is it? 15.88. Right, so all I did there was I just did 25.32 minus two steps. Where the shit did that come from? The two thing, because how much yes. is within two steps of a normal distribution? Yes. Ninety, ninety-five percent. So there would only be five percent outside of there. So would you not say if something had a five percent chance of happening and it did, you go that was unusual. <laughs> five percent chance that a meteorite strikes in you. That's unusual. It's not that though. It's lower than that. Don't forget. This guy's the other way. Just add two steps. So if I add two of those, I should get 34.7? So would, so then part, yes. So I did this, 25.32, the mean minus two steps. Because within two standard deviations, you catch 95%. So it would be unusual to not be caught. You could just bake this okay. and you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Right now, so guys, right now we're accepting that the definition of unusual <coughs> is it starts when you get two steps away. Anything outside of there is unusual. So if you start at the average height and you go two steps up and down, up here are the really tall freaking people where you would do a double, double take. You go, what? And over here are the really small people and you do a double take for them. That's why it's unusual. That makes good physical sense. It's outside the realm of what we expect. If you wrote it, I know. Um, so part D says, would it be unusual to get 14? Because you expect to get between these two. So basically from 16 up to 34, you expect. And we, if we got 14, that'd be weird. Are we all right with that? I can't get 15.88. This is people, right? Do you remember what this was? People? Yeah. Yes. So from 16 to 34, that's what I expect. Yeah, 14. Unusual. Outside two standard deviations. You could also put 14 out here and go, Whee! You didn't catch it. So it's unusual. 95% of humans die and you stay alive. That's unusual. Like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> All right? It's like, what did I do wrong? Rapture, you missed it. I'll be there with you. Stealing cars. All right? Is everybody cool with that one? I mean, that's these are the kind of problems I give 
quizzes, tests, quizzes, tests. What about number three? That's the uniform probability one, right? Mm -hmm. That was it for two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Three is like from zero to 18. So how tall is it going to be? Yeah. And then B says at most five minutes or something? First five. Within the first five. So the way to say that in statistics lingo would be, you can even just say this. It's the same thing as this because it can't be less than zero anyway. Less than zero. So if you draw this area that that describes, the answer really, really is just find the area. It totally is. Completely. It's awesome. If you make the whole area one, and you can draw any probability question by the area, you're done. You got the probability of that. Just like the little thing on the dartboard. Same idea. Uh, so what do you get here? How wide is this? Five. How tall is it? One Everything's one eighteen tall. So five eighteen switches. Point two seven eight. Point who? Two seven. Seven seven eight. Two seven seven eight. Yes. Okay. And then uh, part C says from ten to thirteen, right? Mm -hmm. So if you draw that, I don't care about my scale. Again, same, same. You can't. I know some people just don't trust this. So that's too easy, Jeff. Just find an areas of rectangles. So how wide is this? Three. Three. How tall is it? One eighteen. Cool. All right. I like it. I like it. And then, is there any more than that one? Oh yeah. So what's that? I mean, that's you're done. Zero. zero. Probably takes more than 18 is zero. There's no nothing out here, so it's a zero percent chance. Yes. do a freaky problem with you for a minute that you will never have to do again. And some of you guys, I hesitate to say that because you're like, I'm not going to watch this shit then. But it's related to what we're about to get into. So it's behooves you to watch it. Oh, F's greater than 18. Is there a chance that can happen? Zero. It's outside the realm of the things that could happen. I'm not going to do these, but there's a reason I'm doing this, all right? I just want to show you. There are probabilities that have roughly a triangular distribution. Now, what is the area of a triangle? One and a half height times base. One and a half height times base. I was going to make a stupid song. I sort of did, but I'm sorry. Uh, so for this one, now can anybody figure out how tall this is supposed to be? What's the area got to be if I want this to be a probability distribution? The area has to be 1. That's why this thing is always the reciprocal of that thing, so it comes out to be 1. Because the area formula for a rectangle is easy. Triangle's got a little bit extra to it. So I want the area to be 1. And what's the base? The height's what I don't know. How long is the base? Four. four. Half of four is two. two, so the height has to be one half. One half. Okay. 
Now watch, watch, let's see if you get this. So what's the probability that I get between from two up to uh, five? So this area here. Now this is where, now, now this, now I, I'm not gonna take this all the way through, but I want you to start to realize, yes, I could do this if I knew the formulas for it, but this gets really freaky. Do you see how the height isn't constant? Could you, you could do this. I'm not going to make you do it. It's a beautiful problem because you have to do the equation of this line, figure out what this would be. It's a beautiful problem. It really is. But do you see how you could work it out? Because it's just a straight line. I could handle that shit. It's just a triangle. If I just, I know how wide it is, don't I? I know the base. I just don't know the height. I have to sit there and figure out the height and then I can get it. So we could do that. If I were evil, I would make you do it. Or if I didn't care about getting into anything else. If you're curious to see what this will look like, I can show you come out of my office. But, I mean, you can imagine. Can't I get the equation of this line? Don't I have two points it goes through? Two, zero, six, one, half. I could get the equation of the line. I could figure out what the y piece would be for five. So that I would know how tall it is. And then I would take the height times half of three. And I'd get it. I, I'd have it. All right. So my point is, if your distribution has a shape that you know the geometrical formulas for area for, you can just do it, brute force that sucker. What we're about to get into more is the normal curve, right? The normal distribution. And for this one, we need some help because I think I pointed this out before. So if I have a normal distribution, let's say, here, you guys try to draw this. Normal distribution, the mean, let's say, is 20, and the standard deviation is, is 4. Why not? <clears throat> Try to draw that situation. Oh, that yeah, that's, that's it, the line. Oh, I'm looking at it from above. No. <laughs> draw the normal curve. Put in the middle what's supposed to be in the middle. So just take a... Should be done. Okay, here we go. What's the normal curve look like? And what goes right in the middle? 20. 20, the mean. So every step I take, what would this, if I said I took one step up, one standard deviation up, what's this? 24. 24. One step down. Holy crap. 16. 16. Another step up, another step down, another step up, another step down. Good, good one. So, how are we doing? All right. So, if I wanted to know the probability that x was between 16 and uh, 28, do you see what area that is we're talking about? We're talking about the area in here. Mm -hmm. Is there a geometrical formula you know that does the area of wavy ass, rectangular sort of not really yeah. thing, right? Souffle that hasn't dropped or something, huh? <laughs> Is there the souffle that hasn't dropped formula right next to your trapezoid formula? No, there's no freaking souffle that hasn't dropped formula, right? You guys with me? Some of you guys are like, let's talk about souffles. What the shit? <laughs> <laughs> right? So what? <laughs> Uh, I think I said this last time, a big thing that calculus is, we're going to use calculus people that have made a table for us using calculus. We're not going to suddenly learn calculus. Don't freak out. Calculus can do the area below any damn curve. That's one huge thing it's able to do. It can calculate the area beneath a curve if you give it the function. I will show you the formula for this curve once. And then you can look at it as much as you want to after I show it to you once. Uh, here, uh, it's, I of course think it's beautiful. I don't blame you if you don't agree with me. There's the formula for that curve. We are never gonna use this directly, okay? If you took a probability 
course that included calculus, like you had to calc to get in, then you would be using this form. We can't. We don't have calculus backgrounds, most of us. Okay. That's the formula for this normal curve. If you put this in your calculator and put a value for mu, you put 20 in for mu and 4 in for sigma, you put that in your calculator, it would actually draw you that shape. That's kind of neat on its own. And it's also neat that we're not going to use this formula directly. <laughs> so let me, let me give you this. Um, tell me this. Uh, if I do this, what does this mean, this, these numbers I'm putting down here? So, so can, does somebody remember what should the be between negative 1 and 1? Between negative 1 and 1, there should be 68%. Now, we can actually work this out. Let me see if you guys can do this. You can actually figure this out. Because I know within one standard deviation, there's 68%. Within two, there's 95%. That's really all you need to know for this, for this problem. So how much is there? How much is this, then? This is 68%, so this is 34%. How much is this? Well, this would be 95%. So this would be, you can do it. If that's 95%, then chop. This is 47 and a half. That's half a 95. So when I add these together, I should get the answer to this. So I'll get, what do I get, uh, 81.5? Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do with this table of numbers I'm going to give you is we're going to capture those two things. Uh, these two things and then this thing. This answer. We're going to figure that out. Let me give you this table. Please try not to freak out immediately. Real quick, uh, let, let me do one quick thing. If there's a, let's see if I can get you guys to get into this. If there's 68% out here, in, in here, how much is outside of that? 68% inside, which is something we know. There must be 32 out here, which means how much is on each side? 16 to the, now. The way to read this chart, the way they put it together, thank God, makes it so I can put it all on one sheet of paper. Holy crap. Zoom. These are z-scores out here. These are the first, these go to the first decimal place of a z-score. So if I wanted to double check this, that there's 16% below a z-score of negative 1. Stay with me. Right? Because this chart, what does this chart always tell you? Well, if you look up a z-score on this chart, it will tell you the area below that z-score. This is how it's set up. Single-minded, it always gives you that. So what if you wanted the area above? You would do 1 minus that. Oh. 
So what is negative 1? It's negative 1.00. So make sure you're on the negative side because we're dealing with a negative z-score, negative 1. Look up negative 1.00. See, this is the second decimal place. Negative 1.00. I don't want negative 1.01. .01. I don't want negative 1.02. I want negative 1.00. What's it say? And if you round that to a couple places, that would be 16%. A number that we got from that three numbers we knew from the empirical rule thing that we talked about before. Yes? Why do you want .01? Because what is negative 1? Is oh, negative 1, is it negative 1.01? .01? No, it's negative 1.00. So when you use this chart, you go to the second decimal place. Anytime you calculate a z-score from now on, you take it to two places. Why? That's all the chart knows. Right? And how many places are the probabilities in the middle? Four. Four. Hey, there's a real. All right. Getting you ready for that shit. Right? Four decimal places in the probability. So how would I do, all right, how would I do this one then? From negative one to two, let me redraw this. I want the probability from negative 1 to 2. Oh, shit. Well, what if I just said the probability below 2? Can you guys look that up? The probability below 2. What's that probability? What percentage of the z-scores are below 2 in a normal curve? So what side you got to look at now? You need the positive side now, right? Is he a positive 2? 2.00.977. 2. 0. 0. 0. So that would be this. Yeah, there's 9. 0.9772. Let me stop there for a second. So this chart, when you look up a z-score in it, it will give you the area below that z-score. And now we know that areas are probabilities. So what's the probability that I got a z-score of less than 2? 97.72 percent chance. Okay, I like it. But that's not really the question, is it? So do I want to keep going down forever for this, to find this area? No, I want to stop here. This is the area that I want for that question, right? That's the area I want. I don't want that much, because that goes forever. So what, how much do I have to subtract off? No, no. The amount that's here. Here. And if you, we got 0.1587. You remember we just looked that up already, the negative 1.00? 1587. Okay, I like it. So if I do 0.9772 minus 0.15, you see how that makes physical sense? I want the area between. So let me take this whole giant area and chop that much off. Mm -hmm. Minus 0.1587, what do you get? 81. 81. 81. 8185? 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. 81. On steroids, right? This is the empirical rule on steroids. This has got everything, not just within one, two, three. It's got everything. So it's not surprising that we get those numbers. But so, so what good is this then? Well, what if the z-scores aren't whole numbers? That's where this dude comes in. Let's do a few more problems. Get used to this chart. Take this away. Oh, maybe I should, yeah, let me do this. So I'm not, like, going between the... Okay. Thank you. So let's do this. Let's say, let's just start off with z-scores by themselves. If I wanted the probability that z is less than uh, 1.9... Three. The people that make 
the most easy mistakes are the ones that don't draw the picture. So where is 1.93 up here? Please put it in the right place. I get people that just kind of throw it wherever they want to. That's frickin' zero, right? So where's 1.93? Up here, somewhere up there, right? Get it on the right side. The picture's supposed to help you. So I know it's gonna be bigger than 50%, right? If I get something smaller than 50%, then it'll make any sense. So can you guys look this probability up on the chart? 1.93. What is it? So if I look at positive, right? What's my z-score? Positive. 1.93. So look at 1.9023. See, that's 3. 1.93 is 0 0.9732. 97.32% chance. I like it. Let's do another one. What's the probability that I get a Z that is bigger than 0 0.18? Try to draw the picture. Shade in the area I'm talking about. That's one thing I forgot to do up here. Shade in the area that I'm talking about. Draw the picture and shade in the area. Let me catch up to you. Again, if I had formulas that were easy to use to get these areas, I would. It would be exactly the same thing as the uniform one, as the triangle one we looked at. It would be the same thing. I don't have easy to use formulas, so we use the chart. Somebody else gave me all those areas already. So the picture is going to look like this. Here's 0.18, roughly. Where's the area that I'm interested in? What's it mean outside? Above this? Yeah. So greater. Some of us have trouble with our inequality symbols, which really shouldn't be true, but it's an arrow that points you in the direction of shade. It's awesome. Up. So when I look up 0.18, what's going to be wrong with that? What do you get when you look up 0.18? As a z-score. That's a z-score. Yeah. Look up 0.18. That's not the right answer. Why? Where is this going to be? What's this always tell me? The area below. below. So immediately put this. Let me see if I remember what the numbers are. I think that's right, right? Sweet, thank you. Immediately put that. Notice something. Z-scores down here. Areas up here. Because it's evil, they look like each other. This will become huge later. You always put z-scores down here, areas up here. So do I stop there and circle this? No, because I can see I haven't answered the question. So what's the other side going to be? Yeah. I was like, wow, did I screw that up? No. <laughs> yes, exactly. If one side is 57.14%, the other side must be the rest. Because all together, they're supposed to make one. Let me see if you guys get, there's a shortcut here. Look up negative 0.18 on the z-score chart. Look up negative 0.18. Negative 0.18. We way down here at the bottom, right? And what did we just get? So the area that's above, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the area that's above 0.18 should be equal to the area that's below negative 0.1. There's a symmetry there. If you don't quite understand what I said, just never do it that way. <laughs> but there's a slight little shortcut there for those of you that get that. But if you don't, you're not going to save two seconds. Who gives a shit? You're fine, right? So don't worry about it if you don't quite. But it's the symmetry of the picture that lets me do that quicker. Okay. Uh, let me give you this. Um, let me see. Where? Oh, yeah. Let me give this to you. I think we're going to. Yeah. A decent little amount. We might be able to do the first one. 
Just worry about number one. You got five parts to it. What do you think you do though? This chart, what's it called? The chart we keep using? It's called the z-score chart. So in order to use it, you better know <coughs> z-scores. Right? I lost that. Let's see that. Um, so if I didn't have a z-score, what would I do? If I had like, you know, a measurement, 80 inches, I would change it into a z-score. We had a z-score formula. Remember that guy? X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So that's going to be number two. We'll do that next time. But focus on number one. Number one is just z-scores. Number one, yeah. To help you on this first thing, I've had the computer draw these for you already. you got to trust me, the people that make the easiest little mistakes are the ones that do not draw the picture. 